far. For this morning, we're going to kick things off with one entitled, Lead Me, Lord. Let's have a listen. A lovely one there entitled, Lead Me, Lord. Let's continue then with getting our words up on screen for this morning. And let's see if I could make that happen here in three, two, and one. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Words from Mark chapter 8, verse 34. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, using versicle 1 on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the Canticle de Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verses 1 to 8. And if you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 36. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness, 
and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. At this time we pause to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we may have committed. Things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of our psalm, and our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 22. Let's have a listen. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of passion surround me. They open wide their jaws at me, like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting ice. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. And you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Hacks of dogs close me in, and gangs of evil doers circle around. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, 
my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild birds. I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. And those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Our second canticle for this morning is canticle number 18, a song to the Lamb. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you have created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so, to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Our Bible reading for this morning comes from the book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 13 through to 24. Let's have a listen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Romans, chapter 11, reading from verses 13 through to 24. Now, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I glorify my mass ministry in order to make my own people jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy, and if the root is holy, then the branches also are holy. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast over the branches. If you do boast, remember that it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. You will say, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. 
but you stand only through faith. So do not become proud, but stand in awe. For if God did not spare the natural branches, perhaps he will not spare you. Note then the kindness of the severity of God, severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And even those of Israel, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you have been cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted, contrary to nature, into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you allow me a couple of seconds to get back to the beginning of the reading from Romans <laughs> chapter 11, verse 13 to 24. And let me tell you, it's a hard-hitting one this morning, and it talks about backsliding, welcoming of newcomers, newcomers not becoming boastful, and the welcoming of those who have backslidden but have come back into the feet. The words are up on screen. Let me tell you. My boy Paul, you see? <laughs> my boy Paul. I love Paul, you know. I really love Paul. My boy Paul, you see? My boy Paul was not mincing words with nobody in this portion of writing this morning. Hmm? He is talking then to the Gentiles. Yes? And he is letting the Gentiles know that yes, Jewish rejection of Jesus was made into a blessing for them. The Jews rejected the Messiah that God sent, and we know as we go into, <clears throat> pardon me, the heart of Lent and then welcoming Easter, we know that the Jews that the God sent the Messiah to save were the same Jews, yes, that would have rejected the Messiah and killed him. Never forget that the Palm Sunday crowd is the same Good Friday lot, yeah? All the voices, well, some of the voices that were yelling, hallelujah, hallelujah, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, were the same voices that were yelling, crucify him, crucify him. The disobedience of Israel huh, is what led to them being cut off from God. And in them being cut off, the message that was being preached to them was heard by the Gentiles, and the Gentiles, who were a foreign nation, accepted this gospel message, accepted salvation through the Messiah, and so was grafted into the family of God. And Paul is telling them, hmm? yes, Jewish rejection of Jesus was made into a blessing for you that you could be accepted. But consider how great a blessing their acceptance of Jesus will be when they do accept him. Hmm? Now, I like it. <laughs> he starts off by saying, I glorify my ministry in order to make my own people jealous. And this sounds like a very spiteful Paul, if you ask me. Yes? Paul is saying, you see me? I have gone from persecutor of the church to proclaimer of the church. I have gone through persecuting people for Jewish law to being persecuted for the message of Christ. And I take pleasure and glory in the fact that this is now my ministry. And why do I do this? I do this in order to make my own people jealous. But I don't do it to make them jealous so that I could feel good about myself. I do it to make them jealous in order that they could come to want to find out and through coming to find out also too could be saved. Hmm? For, he goes on, if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be? And I like that because he's saying if they have 
rejected the word and so the world has been reconciled to Christ. When they come back and accept Christ, imagine the life after death that they will have. Hmm? And in verse 16, he uses an interesting thing. In verse 16, he says, If part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, and if the root is holy, then the branch is holy. And this first fruit probably represents the first Christians who were Jewish. Yes? Remember that the first people to follow Christ were not a new set of people called Christians. It were they were people who were, had already existed, who were already practicing Jews, who like Jesus, who was a practicing Jew, because remember Jesus was not a Christian, Jesus was a Jew. Like Jesus, who was a practicing Jew, came to understand that the Messiah was the fulfilling of all the things they had learned in their study of Judaism. Hmm? He was telling them, remember that their conversion was something holy and good for the church. After all, each of the apostles and most of the human authors of the scripture who were Jewish were the ones who, due to converting to teachings to the teachings of Christ, were the first fruits. And because of them, the conversion then of the first fruits of Gentile came into being. And how much better it will be when there's a complete harvest of both Jews and Gentiles together. Yes? And I like it because he talks about the fact that if a portion is holy, then all is holy. So it's like saying, my eyes can't be considered holy without the rest of my body to which my eye belongs also be considered holy. Hmm? If the root is holy, then the branches are holy. And then he goes into something, yeah, very, very interesting. He says, but if some of the branches were broken off and you, a wild olive shoot, were grafted in their place to share the rich root of the olive tree, do not boast over the branches. Now, here we know it's an agrarian society. It's a society that is based on planting and on animal husbandry. And here... <laughs> You, we thought that grafting was something that, per, well, some of us might have thought that grafting was a new concept that we do now in modern agronomy. Mm -mm. Grafting was happening all the way back in the time of Jesus, and Paul gives us proof of that right here. Yeah? But with the picture of the tree and the branches, Paul reminds the Gentile Christians that it is only by God's grace that they could be grafted into the tree of God the root of which is Israel. So all along, Paul was telling the Israelites, don't feel that because you are the chosen people, you are the only important ones. But here he's trying to keep the Gentile humble, telling the Gentile Christians, don't get it twisted. Yes? Don't think that you are better than the nation of Israel because you have been grafted in while many of them are being now um, cut off because they are not being faithful to God. Don't take pride in that. Know that Israel is the root. He is God's chosen people, just that they are choosing to not choose God. Choosing not to choose God. Okay, you understand, right? And he's telling the Gentile Christians, hmm? you have been grafted like a foreign link into this tree of God, the root of which is Israel. And it's interesting because Using this analogy, and when an old olive tree in the time of Jesus had lost its vigor, yeah, and wasn't bearing like it should, it seems that one of the remedies at the time would be to cut away the branches that were failing and graft in some wild olive shoots. And it was believed that the wild olive shoots, when they latched onto the tree and began to feed on the nutrients that the root was providing, the wild olive shoots would begin producing in bounty and encourage the rest of the tree to produce. The result was said to be the invigorating of the failing tree. And Paul is using this analogy to say, listen, some of the original branches are not doing what they're supposed to be doing and they will be cut off. Hmm? And new, new branches will be grafted in. And this new branch is not meant to, to kill the tree, is not meant to replace the tree, is meant to invigorate and give you life. And when I think about, when I think about our churches, yes, many times I'm very fearful. Hear me out, don't be angry with me, yeah? 
Many times I am fearful because when I look at the average age of our congregations, hmm, and when I look at my own age, if by God's grace I am blessed with another 20 years upon the face of this earth, yeah, I will be close to retirement age for clergy, which is somewhere around 65 and 70. Yes? If I am blessed by God to still have energy to reach 65 and 70, I am hoping that 20 years from now, the church will not just be filled with 65 and 70 year olds. But in order for that to happen, we need to graft in new life into the church. Since in seminary in 2007, boy, this has been a journey, eh? Since 2007 in seminary, yes? And even before, one of the most inspiring things in my Christian walk has been youth ministry. Yes? Because youth ministry allowed me, while I was growing up, an opportunity to experience the things of the church from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Youth ministry allowed me to deepen my faith and my walk with Christ while coming to understand what we were doing as adult Christians, why we were doing it, and the importance of passing it on to the next group of people coming behind me. I have had the privilege of working in and with youth ministry since then. From being led as a youth to leading youth. And for many years, being chaplain to the youth. And I was complaining about two or three years ago before COVID, saying, you know what? I have gotten to the point, yeah, where when you go to sleep, nothing hurts. And when you wake up, something hurts for no reason. And I'm thinking that maybe it is time for new blood to take on the youth ministry. Yes? And God provided. A couple of the youths that we would have trained are now training other people. And that is it. New life grafted into the branches of the tree. But the new life that brings the new branches and the existing branches are all connected to the same root. Now I understand. Many of us are traditional and we like what we like. Many of the young people are not as traditional, not because what is traditional is bad, but more so because what is traditional has not been properly explained to them for many years. And so they have not grown to appreciate what is traditional. More than that, we live in an era that is changing in the face and the dynamics of what is actually church. Listen, I have no problem with amazing grace. But we have for long taken the hymn Amazing Grace and instead of using it as a salvation hymn, used it as a funeral dirge. And nothing is wrong with that use. But we can't expect that if every time Amazing Grace is sung, it is associated with pain and sadness, that our young people will be excited to sing it. Because our young people, not saying they have not experienced sadness and hurt, but our young people are still full of such vigor that they are not thinking about the finality of death just yet. But if you take the words to an amazing grace and you change the rhythm of the hymn from 18 how long, hmm? and you throw in some tambourine, and you speed up the tempo just a little bit. And you pop in some drums. Better it be um, um, garifuna drums, tra traditional drums, or, or, or regular drums from a trap set. Yes? But if you alter just a little bit the rhythm. Hmm? To make it something that both generations can enjoy. Look at Amazing Grace taking on new life. Because the new would have been grafted into the existing, but both are still founded on the root, which is the Spirit of God moving in and through his people. And that's what Paul was saying. And he was telling them, old branches, you all can't complain, yes, about new things being grafted in. New things being grafted in, you can't think it's all about you. There has to be a symbiotic relationship between the two. That is for the benefit of the growth of the tree and for the yield that it will bring. 
And neither of the two should forget that the root and the foundation of this tree is supposed to be Christ. And I love how Paul puts it. Do not boast over the branches, you who are being grafted in. For remember, it is not you that support the root, but the root that supports you. And yes, you could say branches were broken off so that I might be grafting in, and that would be true. But they were not broken off because of you. They were broken off because of themselves. Because they were not yielding fruit. Because of their own belief. And you're only here through your faith, through your belief. So do not become proud. Stand in awe. And I like that. Don't become proud. Stand in awe. Yes, you will bring change. Yes, you will bring new life. Yes, you will bring vibrancy. But don't become proud. Standing off what exists. Standing off the God who can combine these two things together. Standing off the fact that you recognize that they are not polar opposites. But that in actuality, they are all meant to flourish together. And I love exactly that that Paul brings. I love it. And I wonder if we have learned from it. And Paul talks a little bit about the backsliding aspect of the whole thing. Yes? The application of God's purpose is, of course, found in Israel's rejection that the Gentiles might be received. But it is more of a consider the goodness and the severity of God. Paul stretches the need to continue in his goodness. Not in the sense of a salvation by work, but continuing God in God's grace and goodness that is revealed to us, a relationship of continual abiding love and mercy. Hmm? And it's, it's, it's beautiful. Even those of Israel, he says, if they do not persist in unbelief, will be grafted in. So those who have separated themselves for whatever reason from the root, if they let go of their unbelief and come back, will be grafted back into the fold. And yesterday we spoke a little bit about it. Huh? Sometimes God has forgiven those who have walked away from him through their actions and their unbelief. And even though God has forgiven them and has drawn them back, when they come to us, we, pretending to be God, are not as forgiven and are far too judgmental and do not welcome them back into the fold as we should. Hmm? And that is sad. That is sad. Because God is able to graft them in again. If Israel was cut off because of their unbelief, they could be grafted in again if they do not continue in this unbelief. I mean, evidently, some Gentiles probably thought or te were tempted to think that there was no future for Israel since they were in unbelief. She had rejected the gospel and now the gospel had come to the Gentiles. They were probably tempted to think Israel is finished, rejected, cast off, no good for nothing. But God had originally chosen them. Hmm? And Paul was saying, yes, they're going through hardship, but don't count them out as yet. Because if God could accept you as a graft in, imagine how quickly he will accept the natural branches. That belong to the tree. And men. It's a beautiful portion of scripture. Hmm? And the point of the whole thing. Whether you are from the original branch. Or whether you have been grafted in. Your role is not to sit there to compare which you are. Your role is to latch on to the root feed on the nutrients and bear fruit for the tree that's it that was the point grafted in or a natural branch all have the potential to bear much fruit if they remain connected to the root that's it no matter if you're old school, new school, high church or low church. Stay connected to the root. 
do not lose focus of why you are there. You are there to continue to strengthen your relationship with Christ, to use your relationship with Christ for the glory of God and the furtherance of his kingdom, to draw hearts unto him, that together we can all bear fruit. And don't forget that. The same rules apply to us. Jesus let us know. For the branches that do not bear fruit will be cut off and thrown into the fire. It is what it is. And God doesn't lie. Your job is not to worry about anything other than what you are producing. That is your responsibility. That is our individual responsibilities. And let me tell you, if we were all focused on bearing fruit where we are, instead of looking to see how the other branches are faring up, maybe the yield would be greater. But that's another sermon for another time. Let me tell you. Keep your eyes fixed. Keep your heart connected to the source. Stay latched on to the root. Because that is where your source of life comes from. And being latched to the root. Feeding on the nutrients. Bear fruit. For God's kingdom. Do not compare. Do not compete. Do not condemn. Allow God's spirit. To cultivate in you. A bountiful crop. For the glory of the kingdom. Question. Are you. Bearing fruit. Amen. We continue now with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son and the Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, life everlasting. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage B on page 44. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth and your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. 
Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Together we say a call it for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our prayers of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday today is Miss Aurelia Kane, Reverend Juan Simpson, Miss Ali Harewood, Mr. Jeffrey Nelson, Miss Annette Clark, and Mr. Mike Way. Celebrating a birthday tomorrow is Mr. Kevin Maid, Miss Enid Johnson, Mr. Richard Pryor, and Mr. Colin Longford Sr. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that indeed God's blessings continue to be upon you, not just for today, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, and Miss Joyce. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Sylvia, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Lisa. Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, and Miss Kim. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Venancia, Miss Derla, Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Molly, Miss Agnes, Miss Lena, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Ruby, Miss Arlet, Miss Yolanda, Miss Janice, Miss Glenda, and Miss Amy. We pray for Miss Priscilla, Miss Jean, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Delvereen, Miss Doreen, Miss Geraldine, and Miss Myrtle. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Miss Veroline, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Alair, Miss Nina, Miss Leonore, Miss Gladys, Miss Robin, Miss Elena, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Anne, Miss Fiona, Miss Catherine, Miss Kelia, Miss Velina, Reverend Ilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Reverend Linda, Miss Carolyn, Miss Gretel, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Brenda G, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Miss Nadia, Miss Sheila, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Jean, Miss Perla, Miss Shelmadine, Miss Zindi, and Miss Suzette. In our prayers, we pray for the following of our brothers. We remember and pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenwick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, Mr. Randall, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddie, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belhem, Mr. Dudley, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., and Mr. Carlos. We pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Mr. Lyndon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Emmett, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, Father Leroy, Mr. Russell, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Michael Griffith, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, and Bishop Nicasio. We remember and pray for Bishop Wright, Mr. Gustavo, 
Mr. Earl Sr., Mr. Richard, Mr. Lloyd, Mr. David, Mr. Ernest, Mr. Lincoln, Mr. Grayson, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Kieran, and Mr. Paul. For those who have requested our prayers, and especially for those who fear there is none to pray for them, pray that they will feel God's blessings and mercy surrounding them. In our prayers this morning, we remember and pray for God's comfort upon those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Miss Christina Passos Pryor, Miss Brenda Card Stewart, Miss Rosalinda Ihino, Miss Victoria Ramos, Miss Onilda Young, and Mr. Antoine Flores. For all who are grieving the loss of a loved one, those preparing to lay a loved one to rest, those who recently laid a loved one to rest, we pray for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and we pray for return and rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember and pray for our students, praying for Tammy, Anwa, Karina, Courtney, Akua, Randolph, Ashley, Ria, Kai, Elton, Arian, Angel, Rihanna, and Garrett. We remember our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jason, Candy, Prince, Jade, Gavin, Charles, Barry, Sam, Alvin, and Keishan. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray, especially for Drs. Molina, Arnold, Manzanero, Ariaga, Chogreen, Ken, Arana, Joseph, Eck, Lawrence, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for our nurses, praying for Nurse McKin, Nurse Gill, Nurse Alberta, Nurse Herrera, Nurse Aaron, Nurse Ravel, Nurse Alejandra, Nurse Cherie. Nurse Olivia, Nurse Joycelyn, Nurse Julie, and Nurse Ashley. For all our medical professionals in the performance of their duties, both in public and private institutions, we pray for God's continual blessings to be upon you. In our prayers, we continue to pray for persons who have contracted COVID-19, persons in their various stages of isolation, and persons who care for those individuals in isolation. We remember and pray for persons who are still struggling with post-COVID syndrome. We continue to give God thanks for the availability of a vaccine and we continue to pray for a cure, the containment and the elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We continue to pray for persons who have lost employment, persons whose salaries would have been reduced, we continue to pray for all who are struggling financially to make ends meet. We remember as well the most vulnerable in our society, the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions, persons battling autoimmune illnesses, persons struggling with illnesses such as cancer and liver failure. We continue to remember and pray for persons who are suffering from mental health challenges, persons who are struggling with substance abuse issues, persons who are facing or living in violent or abusive situations. For all persons in their various challenges, we pray that God would meet them at the point of their needs. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the various branches of our security forces. We remember and pray for our government, for the churches and church leadership, for the private sector, but all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19 or in any form of humanitarian. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community, those most severely affected by this pandemic, those affected by the ravages of war, those affected by the ravages of natural disaster, civil unrest, and gun violence for all persons in their various stages of recovery following any of these challenges. Pray for God's provision and protection over you, even as we pray for ourselves and our region, God's protection to continue to be upon us. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, 
We pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. In our prayers, we conclude our intercession by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of Almighty God as well as in your presence. I want to thank those of you who joined in for Bible study last evening. Unfortunately, I had a pre-existing appointment and could not join Bible study. I really don't like missing Bible study at all. Mm. But I am thankful for those of you who are able to join in, and we are thankful to Bishop Wright for leading us in that Bible study. Remember that every Thursday we have Bible study um, at 7.30 via Zoom. We always share the link on our individual Facebook pages, so be on the lookout for that. Not sure. I think we might have next Thursday. I am not sure just yet, because I know we have Monday Thursday services going on during Holy Week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Coming up ahead of us, yeah, most churches on Saturday will be engaged in the making of palm crosses. If you are near to a church or if you have some time, pop into your local church and see how you can assist in the making of palm crosses. Yes, and of course, we are making palm crosses in preparation for Palm Sunday. Yep, all of our churches will be having Palm Sunday services coming this Sunday, most of which will be joint ecumenical services between the Anglican Church, the Roman Catholic Church, and the Methodist Church in some instances. Mm -hmm. Here in the Parish of Christ the King, the Anglican Church and the Methodist Church will be gathering at the Drums of Our Fathers Monument at the entrance of town, will be led by the ecumenical, marching, ecumenical High School Marching Band, and we will process through the streets of Tangriga, through St. Vincent Street onto Commerce Street, turning down at Courthouse Road in front of the police station where the band will drop off the members from Christ the King at Christ the King Church and then carry on just a little bit further to drop off the members of Epworth Methodist Church to their churches. Of course, in the parish of Christ the King, we're having one grand Palm Sunday procession. Our mission churches will be joining us here in town. Transportation will be provided for persons from the Pomona, Hope Creek, and Hopkins area. Please come out and promote the kingdom of God. Bear fruit by being a part of your Palm Sunday processions in your own locale. It is my culpa, it is my fault that I did not seek out to find the Palm Sunday schedule from all our churches, but I will try to work on that at some point today that you could have it before Sunday morning as a part of what we post. Yeah? on our pages, on our Facebook pages. So be on the lookout for schedules. You might just see one that is happening in your area. I believe those are all the notices for now. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful Friday. Remember, it is the final Friday of the month, so traffic is probably going to be heavier than just a regular Friday. While you're out there, hmm, please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe and know that we are thankful for your continual support of the work and ministry of the Anglican Diocese of the League. We're going to wrap up this morning with our prayer of dedication followed by the grace of dismissal and our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of your Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off with this one. I love this one. Listen, let me tell you. Right if you didn't know, I was raised a Roman Catholic up until my early 20s. I was actually a Roman Catholic. But people will not know that because I was always in an Anglican church with Miss Ellen. One of my favorite Lenten hymns is the hymn, God of Mercy and Compassion. Listen to the words of this hymn. I pray that it guides you to today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe over this weekend. I look forward to seeing you on Monday morning. Same place, same time. Until then, God bless and bye for now. One final thing before the bye for now. Our schedule for today. Following this broadcast, noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30, 6 o'clock, our final online stations of the cross will be led by the Children of Christ the King Anglican School, and then at 9 p.m., our complaint. That's it. I'm out of here. God bless. Bye for now.